Welcome to the first proper Vox Wizard video of 2018. Now, here behind me, we have three of my favourite Golf GTIs of all time. The Golf GTI Edition 30, the Golf GTI Edition 35, and the Golf GTI Edition 40. Now, just in case you've been living on a different planet for the last 15 years, all three of these cars were produced to celebrate the anniversary of the Mark I Golf GTI. This is the original GTI and it came out in 1976. So the Edition 30 came out in 2006, the Edition 35 was 2011 and the Edition 40 was 2016. They're all based on standard cars, they all have a bit more power, they all have a bit few more badges and a bit more spec and just a bit more GTI-ness. As a result they're really popular with enthusiasts like me and they hold their value really well. Now everybody knows about the Edition 30, it's been around a long time and you probably know a lot about the Edition 40 because of the ring record and all the press coverage that was only like 18 months ago. But the Edition 35 is probably the unknown car and those that do know a lot about it say it really didn't move things on much from the Edition 30 and it's true. A little fact you may find interesting is that even though the Mark VI was based on the Mark V, there wasn't an awful lot of change going on, the platform was the same. Every Mark VI had a different engine to that in its equivalent Mark V, apart from the Edition 35, it still had what was a TFSI engine, even though it says TSI on the engine cover, which goes back to the original Mark V of uh, 2004. So a pretty old engine then, but that has its pros and cons, and it's really reliable, really tunable, and it's a you know it's still a nice package. But it came only a few months before the end of Mark VI production, and the Mark VII GTI was probably a year away, and that moves things on even further so it's kind of the forgotten anniversary model in many ways and as a result i thought you might want to see a video and have a look a closer look at it and see what makes the edition 35 as valid a collector's item as the other two cars so without any further ado let's have a good look at the golf gti edition 35. okay guys welcome to the handsome exterior of the mark 6 golf gti edition 35. now before we have a good look around it let's just have a quick look at the mark 5 over here just for comparison now the Mark V looks great, but it is looking a bit old now, and the Mark VI, to my eyes, looks like a Mark VII, which is effectively a current model. So if you like the way a Mark V drives, because it's basically an Edition 35 underneath, but you want a newer car on your driveway that's easier to finance, easier to warranty, then the Mark VI, and particularly the Edition 35, is a really good choice. Now standard on the Edition 35 are those lovely bi-xenon headlights. They come with LED daytime running lights, and they look cool. Obviously, the daytime running lights are good for safety and xenon headlights at night make driving a lot easier. Standard on the Edition 35 are those 18-inch Watkins Glen alloy wheels with 22540 18 tyres, exactly the same as an Edition 30. And even the brakes are actually exactly the same as an Edition 30, which for road is fine, but on track they're a bit undernourished. 312mm brakes, solid rear discs as well, which isn't brilliant. You do have these lovely 35 badges on the wings, and the sill extension. You can order 19-inch Glendale wheels, which look like Chinese copies of the TTRS rotors if you if you must, but I don't think you can beat BBS-style wheels on a limited edition Golf, as these two cars confirm. Okay, around the back we've got LED rear lights. These are nothing special on an edition 35. It's just because it's a later GTI. It's got these as standard. They, they came on the standard GTI from about 2011. 
for the Mark 6 and still continues for the Mark 7, Volkswagen decided the exhaust pipes for a GTI should be either side of the back bumper, so, so that still looks pretty modern as well. You've got that lovely diffuser. Yeah, it's a good looking car. This car's got kind of really heavily tinted rear windows. It is factory fitted, so I think they're probably 95% tinted, which is really dark, but um, yeah, that's from the factory. Nobody's pimped it up. Okay, let's have a look inside. Just turn the lights off. Right then, uh, I've got a flat bottom steering wheel with red stitching, that's really nice. GTI badge there, yeah, lovely. You don't get a particularly brilliant stereo as standard in these, that's I think an RCD 315 or 310, and it's probably the second from bottom of the four available, so not brilliant, but you can get digital radio, which is a nice touch. Heated seats are standard, as they always are, with the leather interior. In fact, let's have a look at the leather interior, which is actually nothing special. It's just the same as the one in the standard GTI if you were to order it. Obviously, it's an option in the standard GTI, but there's no red stitching on it. There is a red piping to the seat belts. Red piping to the floor mats, red stitching on the gear gator and handbrake lever. So, yeah, they've made some effort in there. Yeah, it's quite a nice place to be. And also, on Mark 6s, they were very good at putting these sill covers on. So you don't see that on a Mark 7. I don't think my Club Sport S has got anything there at all. Which is a bit of a shame. They actually put it here. And I think on the other cars, not the Club Sport S, it's the ambient lighting, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but a really nice dashboard. Really well made. And different to the Mark 5 is that all this is black. So on the GTI, this was black. Uh, on the Mark 5, this is gravy and a leather. On the Mark 6s it's black and the dashboard's darker as well, which looks better quality, I think. Didn't particularly like the grey plastics on the Mark 5, so that's definitely a step in the right direction. Right, let's have a look under the bonnets. So the big difference between this and the normal GTI is that whatever it says on the bonnet, don't believe it, this is a TFSI. It goes back to the engine in that, and it's pretty much the same engine as that. That's the BWA coded engine. This is CDL, I believe. Yeah, CDL. So CDL is actually the same engine as in the Scirocco R, but the software is different on this, so it runs a bit less power. The big difference, which you'll need to know every five years, is that this car has got a cam belt. So every five years you have to get the cam belt changed on the normal Mark 6 GTI, and in fact on the Mark 7 GTI, the Mark 7 R, they're all cam chain. So, this kind of is what marks this out engine as this engine out as an old one. It's not a bad thing because you change it every five years and you know it's going to last you five years while on the chain. There's potential that within five, within I don't know, say 15 years, it could fail, and you need a new engine. Uh, another difference on Mark Six is that Volkswagen stopped painting under the bonnet and down here on the inner wings, it's all grey primer, which BMW have been doing for ages, but. I guess it shows that the accountants have been at it again, so whilst in many ways it's nicer to look at a Mark, than a Mark V, there have been some dips in the quality. In fact, this underbonnet soundproofing is just rubbish. Really not as good as a Mark V. OK, so TFSI, the 235PS, and it will remap like an Edition 30 to 300 horsepower, no problem. You might have trouble with traction, you might have trouble with brakes, but it's a reliable engine and I like these a lot. They're not brilliant on fuel. Another downside over the Mark 6 is that you'll probably find that it's about 20% heavier on fuel, which if you do the mileage isn't particularly good. And the Mark 6 GTI, let's face it, was 210. It's not a bad car to drive. It feels quicker than 10 horsepower more than the Mark 5 GTI for sure. So you have to really want one of these. And if you don't tune it, you're kind of missing the trick really, because you might as well just have a, a standard GTI with a good spec on it. So there we go, that's the engine. Now let's go and have a drive. Okay guys, welcome to Behind the Wheel of the Golf GTI Edition 35. Now, in many ways this feels just like a Mark V Golf GTI. You probably wouldn't be surprised, it's probably got very similar suspension. This car hasn't got the dynamic chassis control or adaptive chassis control, depending which year it was. Um, you know, the adaptive dampers that you could get on a Mark VI, so it's got standard passive dampers just like on a Mark V and it's got the same size wheels as an Edition 30 or an 18 inch wheel Mark V GTI. Uh, it's got a six speed manual gearbox, so you could have had DSG. So a lot of the components are the same. It's no bad thing really, it's the Mark Vs are great, 
obviously this car's totally unmodified, so it's running standard ride height, and uh, it's got standard power, which, to be honest, two, three, five horsepower for the front tires only. It's pretty much about as much as you need, really, for for a car like this. I've got 300 horsepower in my car, but that's for track, and I'm running it on. Toyo R888 tyres on normal road tyres. It's just a recipe for wheel spin. So this is a really nice package. So you've got pretty comfortable suspension, independent suspension as well on the Mark 5, Mark 6 platform. And it's good fun. So let's just turn around and go and do that again. Okay, so that's second gear. A little bit of scrabbling, but it doesn't ask go well. Tiny bit of understeer there, into fourth, and it feels lovely and agile and quite compact, which on these kind of roads is what you want. It's the GTI, after all, that's into fifth, and a bit of a crest here, the brakes feel pretty nice, lovely, lovely not too floaty over that crest, another crest onto a corner, yeah. All the good things you love about a Mark 5 GTI are here, but they're just newer and fresher and less likely to have been ragged around by somebody around a driving McDonald's on a Saturday night. It's just and the noise. I reckon it's got a bit of engine piping, engine noise piping into the engine because into the cabin because it's a little bit more vocal than a Mark 5. And it reminds me a little bit of this Scirocco R, which is remember from the same sort of era. So yeah, wow. <laughs> Yeah, that feels amazing. It's a GTI through and through, you know. It's got a little bit more power and it's just great fun. In fact, so much fun. Let's do that again. And there's not going to be anybody behind us, let's face it. Okay, so first gear. Nowhere near the rev limiter, into second. God, it hardens. 5,000. Like, go, yeah, let's go again, yeah. Okay, that's uh, four, so it's a tricky off camera corner. Aware that there are other people on the road and there are driveways, but a bit lean in there, a bit of camber in our favour for a change. On fourth gear, onto the brakes, which feel lovely. Got a bit of heat in the pads now. Tricky camber here, a bit narrow. And the ride is beautiful. This is what happens if you keep a car standard, it just feels lovely and what's the word? Loose limbed, something like that. It just flows with the road, basically. Over a crest now. Oh, slight bit of traction control there. As the wheels were unweighted, so a bit of slip, but not much. And it just feels mighty, mighty, mighty. A bit of imperfection in the road to avoid. It's just amazing. I've forgotten how good this car was. Oh, the brakes. I'm not very good at that point. <laughs> Okay, we can do that again. You better go easy on the brakes, though. Okay, second gear. Bit of wheel spin. Into third. Just goes into understeer. Now, I've got to admit, this car's on GT radial tyres, and while they sponsor Evo Track Day Art Track Evenings at Rockingham and Bedford, they're not necessarily the best tyre for this kind of car. Um, so, bear that in mind. But holding on pretty well. The conditions for once are lovely. The road's nice and dry. Again, here's that hump again. Lovely. Just feels totally in control over that. Turn it. You can feel the chassis loading up and the vibrations coming through it, but it's not upsetting the car at all. Still in third, it's talking, that's uh, fourth, yeah, so talky, I thought I was in third. Uh, I mean, this road is not the easiest road to drive, but the speed this car's carrying is a remarkable. So, yeah, actually, I mean, I drive this car to 
test it before I sell it. It is for sale. I don't really tend to drive it like that, but for the purpose of this video, I have, and I'm really genuinely impressed. Um, my Mark V now has got pedal suspension on it. It's a bit lower, it's a bit harder. I don't think it could keep up with this car on that road, even if it's got more power, because this car flows with the road. It's loose-limbed, it, it, you know, it's well damped, so it doesn't float and bounce and roll too much. And it lets you, you know, totally, obliterate a b-road like that that was fantastic okay let's drive a bit slower now i think and in every other way it just feels like a good old golf the gear change is lovely the steering weight just feels nice and natural not over servo there's no adjustment to the, the steering or anything really this is how it is which is a really good balance for a, a sporty hatchback Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video on this Mark 6 Golf GTI Edition 35. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and it's really important that you subscribe, so please click that subscribe button. The more subscribers I have, the better content I can make and there'll be a lot more content now. The weather's got better. I've got lots of plans ahead for this summer, so please subscribe. Okay, see you for the next video soon. Cheers.